Welcome to the Empower LA podcast. My name is Brett Shears and I am a project coordinator at Empower LA, proudly serving as a field representative for the South Los Angeles Neighborhood Council community. Before we jump into things, I wanted to start by saying a little bit about myself as this is the first podcast. So I've had uh, various roles in the Neighborhood Council community going back a few years, beginning with my time as a committee member on the North Area Neighborhood Development Council, which serves the area around USC, where I was attending graduate school at the time. I went on to become a full-fledged board member, then the chair of our land use committee, and I also served with the Budget Advocates and the South Los Angeles Alliance of Neighborhood Councils. In addition to my volunteer roles, I've also served as an independent election administrator, and of course now as a full-time staff at Empower LA. So I've worn a lot of hats, and I feel comfortable talking about the variety of issues that affect the neighborhood council system. And that's ultimately what the purpose of this podcast is is to dive into the topics, people, and institutions that bring us together as a community. So over the weeks and months, and hopefully even years, we are going to try and bring together guests, sometimes one at a time, sometimes in conversation with each other, who can provide some insights about how this whole neighborhood council system operates, how it works within the larger city ecosystem, and who are the people that make it go. So thanks for joining us as we get started, and bear with us as we work out the kinks. I hope you enjoy it. This week's guest is Tom Soong, a project coordinator in leadership development and field representative for councils in Northeast Los Angeles. Tom has a long history with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, arguably the longest history. In fact, his tenure predates the department itself in some ways, going all the way back to 1999. Tom has worked in a variety of capacities with the department, and in this interview, he offers a wealth of insights about what it is that we do to help fulfill our core mission of neighborhood empowerment. I hope you enjoy the interview as much as I did. Thanks. Hey, Tom, thanks for coming on the first ever Empower LA podcast. I really appreciate you taking the time. Brett, glad to be here. Isn't this crazy that we're doing this? This is very crazy. This, first time ever. I think. Does any city government ever do a podcast? Is this a crazy idea? Should we not even be doing this? No, we should be doing this. <laughs> you know, I don't know if other, other cities are doing it, but we'll be doing it. Tom, Tom, the reason I wanted you to be the f inaugural guest wow. is because I know you should feel honored. Yeah. You really should. <laughs> is because as we've been talking, we're cubicle mates, first of all. So that's kind of cool. Yes. Tom, you're cubicle at 25. That's right. And I'm 26. So yes. if anyone ever wants to stop by and see us, yeah, we'll be there. you know where to find us. That's right. But Tom, you would, you've been with the department longer than I'm guessing anybody, and in fact, like your time here precedes the even the existence of the department. You know, I want to, I, I want to, to have that, you know, for, that, that that accolade as the as the longest running. You want in, official uh, formal recognition of I that? I do, right? I do, but I just, but in checking in, in checking the facts, I am actually the second person okay can we can we get, Aaron, can we get on the line the first person because <laughs> this is all just a moot point no, I'm just tom you're a good guest you're radio, radio podcast friendly so we're okay. going to keep you as well, the thank guest you. thank you Sorry. But I, before I, I didn't mean to lie to you no Sorry. it's okay no no there's no deception okay. there are there are other reasons there is, that's okay. not the only reason okay okay <laughs> But before we jump into, you know, our, our experience with the Neighborhood Council system, yeah. tell me a little bit about yourself, you know, who you are, where you're from, how you got to this point. Well, I took the, I took the 110 freeway right. and, okay. I, and I got here. But prior <laughs> to that, though, uh, a little bit about, about me. Uh, I was born in, from tai, in Taipei, Taiwan, and my parents, uh, we immigrated here. I'm my only child, okay, so we immigrated here back in, gosh, back, like 1979. And then we stayed in Virginia to uh, because my uncle was there. So we lived there for three years. And then in 82, my father had aspirations of uh, starting and opening a restaurant in California because we had another family friend in, Los, in, in California. So we moved over and we lived in, in, in Hacienda Heights uh, since 1982. Uh, since then, my parents have passed away, but we still have the, the house there. So that's where I grew up. Uh, I went to, for college, I did go to, you know, Brett, you like this. I went to UCLA. I love UCLA, so yes. I do like that. Well, yeah, for, for undergrad. And mm -hmm. I majored in 
uh, sociology and specializing in education. Oh, mm, cool. Yeah, so that's a little background. And you want to know a bit about a little career-wise? Yeah, know. yeah. I mean, you've been at the department. It's only really existed even in theory since yeah. 1999. Yeah. Yeah. So you worked before then. You had some time. How'd you get to that point? Sure. Let me let me, let me me dive into that a little bit. That's where the, at UCLA, when I was at UCLA, when I was about to graduate, you know, like most folks that graduate, that are planning to graduate, the big question is, what are we going to do with our lives, mm -hmm. right? And then... And my and I found out about this program called Peace Corps, which which uh, which allowed you know folks to go overseas and volunteer, and you know like third world parts of the city, not city, but third world countries, and to just you know be to make a difference, whether it be education. And I was planning to you know, teach English over there, and so but then also living in a city for you know far away from a distant land, maybe without electricity, without running mm. water, that's a <laughs> that's a huge change. And then, so I decided to do what's called the Vista Program, AmeriCorps, Volunteer and Service America, which is like a Peace Corps, but in the United States. Right. And I, had to, I decided, look, if I was going to go to do something like that, I rather I either stay in Los Angeles where there's a big need, or I go somewhere just really outrageous. And I decided to go to, of all places, Juneau, Alaska. Oh my to, God. Yeah, to be a volunteer and service coordinator to work with. Uh, uh, parent volunteer groups and also nonprofit groups to help strengthen their volunteer program. So I did that for a year, and then for for, uh, for other reasons, I didn't go the Peace Corps route. But then I decided to stay local, and then I got a job with a with a. So then through the Vista experience, um, that 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 basically that showed that I've always had some like a community oriented background. Let me, mm -hmm. let me let me just back up there. You know, let me um, like faith is a very important part of my life, and I grew up in. And a strong faith and community-wise, it's very important to me. And mm -hmm. helping others is very, very, very important to me. That's why I decided to do do Vista. Um, so then I, other than, so that's a little more background there. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to come back, and then ever since then, um, I found a job with the city as part of their volunteer uh, recruiting uh, voter outreach program with the city clerk. Okay. So I know we're working with the city clerk now. So right. It's, like, it's all like coming a, back full circle. There you right? go. There you go. So with that, with that, I was part of the. Uh, Outreach team to to reach uh, Asian Americans to get them vote more involved with the voting process, and then from there, um, for me, I feel like this is one of the best jobs I ever had was to be a field deputy for a, uh, for one of the uh, city council mem members there. Who was that? This was a uh, councilman Mike Hernandez. Okay. So some of you, some of those, folks, some of you old timers probably. Some know of the old timers. That. I don't know. I'm not steeped enough in city politics. You're not that steeped enough. enough so right, I don't know. right. But uh, he's had a. Well, we'll just leave it there. He had he had a reputation. You know, but then uh, it was a fantastic ex experience and working with um, communities. I worked with the communities of, you know, Chinatown, mm -hmm. Lincoln Heights, Echo Park, Angelino Heights. So it was an opportunity to be his representative out there to the community, hearing the community needs, hearing the concerns, and really uh, relaying to them the councilman's visions and goals, but also working in partnership together to, you know, to better their community. And then so when the department, so... Being being the second, you know, um, old veteran here, I that that's how I kind of found that about the job back in 1999. There was opening for what's at that time called the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, mm -hmm. and that that and the, and the job descriptions entailed working with local communities, connecting with folks, and and a lot of the same things what I was doing as a field deputy, but without the shall we say the 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 more the the politics of it, even though our mm -hmm. job is still, but you know this, it's sure. still kind of political, but right. not so in your face there. So right. that's how. So when I saw that job, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is. I I really felt like I was you know, born to this job, and 17, my gosh, 17 years later, Brad, I am still here. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, who is the? You know, there's going to be some curiosity, and we'll get to this at some point. Yeah. Who was the first employee? Uh, Betty, I believe it was that, that, that's currently right now. You mean the cur the first one ever? Or yeah. Well, who preceded you at the department? How about that? that I know you're talking about continuously, but also, she just is who Betty, who Betty, were some of the people that preceded you more generally too? Uh, the only other person I could think of is, is a Betty Wanoyama. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, you know Betty from the yeah. She's in the, she's she in the she Valley. helps. Yeah. She's also a project coordinator Correct. who helps with our yeah. NC support. Yeah. So she's yeah. Uh, so she she came on board I think maybe four or five months before I did. Okay. So you started in. 1999. Do you remember which month, which day? I mean, I know that's very specific. I but. started in. Uh, I, let me think. At that time, 
I think it was November. Okay. When I started. So what had been going on at the time? What was your understanding of this big change that was happening towards you know this creation of the neighborhood council system? I like the word the word you use creation because at that time in 1999, I think earlier in the year, the uh, the voters of Los Angeles decided to create uh, to vote on a new city charter. Right. And in that charter, called for the creation of a whole way of doing governance, and surprise, the whole the, the creation of a, the whole citywide system of neighborhood councils. Mm -hmm. And along with that, that's how our department got created. And that, uh, and then uh, along that charter, it called for the creation of the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, and also what's called the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners, that that oversees the you know some of the policies that of the of the, of the, of the, the department right. as well. Right. So the the board member commissioners, the civilian appointed board who helps you know construct and guide it's, it's the a, policies. It's the mayor's the mayor's appointed exactly right. the mayoral appointed yeah. commissioners. Yeah. Right. So they've existed since that time, kind of in tandem. They you know we'll bring on one of the commissioners at some point to talk right. about their evolution as they well. They're very but, important to us. Yeah. Well, they <laughs> they are important. We care about their policies and you know their yeah. perspective. Yeah. But they've had a lot of changes too as in the, in the as the department has right. so i mean that's the next thing i really want to ask sure. you about so in your long tenure here what you know what kind of changes have you seen what is the most significant change for the department or you know just as a perspective of someone who's been in the the city government for a very long time yeah Brent, i want to go back to your first point of uh you, me you mentioned what's hap what was happening back in 1999 okay so currently right now um you, know, you mentioned that you're a board member of um, one of the neighborhood councils and then, and then uh, at that back in 1999, there were no neighbor councils. Right. Let's put it that way. Right. And then, so at least not in the way they're constructed now. I mean, maybe there were neighborhood associations, which people feel that morphed into neighborhood councils for them. You know, right. I don't know how they view it. I just don't want to eliminate that perspective. I get what no, you're saying. No, no, no. There's yeah. a right at that time. There was right. no system. No, there's no system. Right. There was a. I think people were always kind of engaged. Right. You know, with the neighbor council. A quick short history is that. You know the, the neighborhood council system. Right, remember, it was a. You know, it was a. This is what you know, Professor Dr. Rafe Jonestown would always say: the neighborhood councils, they were started because of a, a revolution, a revolt. You know, it was not started because everyone wanted it. People were upset. People felt that city government weren't really giving "quote unquote" power to the people. And then we had to deal with the S word back in 1999, mm -hmm. right? The, Explain that that is, so the, people yeah, the S aren't guessing. That's right. The S word is secession, mm -hmm. right? A lot of the folks in the San Fernando Valley and some folks in the harbor, they wanted to secede from the city. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why we had neighborhood councils. Hey, look, you know, we want to show, and folks weren't happy because they weren't getting the resources. They felt they were not getting the resources. Right. The city was not doing their, their due diligence and their job to provide the resources, and they were getting fed up. And... So that's why the system was created. And no, to show the to show the stakeholders of Los Angeles, city city of Los Angeles, that no, there is a mechanism, an infrastructure in a place for you to get to to hear more of your concerns and your and your voices. So all this stuff was happening back in 1999. Uh, some of the words that you heard back then was experiment. You know, um, not going to last. Well, that's more than one word, but it's, it's not going to last, right? Um, what we'll, we'll give them something. To 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 kind of to quiet them down, right, right, right. right. So throwing, this, throwing these communities a bone, right, so they kind right. of feel satiated for a little while, right. right. So me, me, and the other other project coordinators at that time, you know, we're like, we're, you know, we, there was a lot of pressure for us to go out there to to identify the boundaries and to organize the folks to actually have them form neighborhood councils. So some that's so that's what I would say is that the question is, you know, what are some of the most significant changes? Is that we went through the phase of uh, what do you call organization. Mm -hmm. That's phase one, mm -hmm. I believe, in the early 1999, early 2000s, when there were no neighbor and councils. Right. You know, right. I, think, I think the first one was, you know, was Wilmington mm -hmm. you know, back in that, that was done like, I think in 2000. And they were ready to go because they were already ready to secede. They're like, we're organized. <laughs> we're gonna... Right. 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 So you bring up a good point. So, so some of the changes I what I've seen is that right. Um, you, we say the we. I think you meant the people who have access to some of the 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 influence already sure you know it's just like the valley and the harbor there were you know the who do we have to who do we have to go out and get right mm -hmm. the, the, the the people who we have you know the chamber of commerce the homeowner association right right we we we, we kind of targeted them first but with understanding that the beauty of neighborhood councils is that 
you can also you don't have to be a citizen of the U.S. to get in, involved too, mm -hmm. you know. And then so when we were forming doing this first phase, there were there was a lot of pushback, right? Right? You know, some of the homeowner associations didn't want to feel they were losing the their their power. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean, I I wasn't there for the creation, but you know, just to give a little more context, the, the con consistent statistic for many decades, you know, Los Angeles is a city of nearly a quarter immigrant population yeah. who is a non-citizen. So yeah. that's a very wide spectrum of non-citizen, but yeah. these are people of varying statuses who otherwise don't have a formal avenue of participation. You know, you're talking about these associations, but the neighborhood council provides them that, right? So in that struggle about whether or not to include them, I imagine it must have been heated because you have this dilemma of, okay, there are a lot of them, so morally we should feel obligated to yeah. do it, but there are a lot of them, that means they might be able to exert a lot of influence too, yeah. where otherwise they might not have. So. Right, these voices that we never heard before, it's like, where they come from, right? right? And then there's also this kind of, um, not so much possessiveness, but then if you if you feel that you're the one who's been doing kind of all the work and who's been representing, and then all of a sudden you have to listen to other voices, you know that's kind of a challenge as well. Yeah, yeah. and I mean I I know we still struggle with that, and I think one thing the neighborhood council has been consistent because it's still you know 15 year anniversary is what we're trying to do push a lot right, right now. Wilmington right. is into its 16th year now. It celebrated its 15th anniversary first as the first yeah. council. Um, but we we're still very young as an institution, so we still suffer from a lot of the problems that any young institution suffers from, which is you know branding, identity, getting the word out that you know what do you do, what do you all do, why do you exist, what's your reason for being, and um, you know we're we're going to struggle with that. We're going to try to talk through that as we go through these conversations. But mm -hmm. um, you know just to continue, I, I, I'm curious. You know, in addition to these changes that you've seen, mm -hmm. is there anything you can identify as a particularly memorable? Success success that you've had at the department, you know, whether that's a success you've had in your capacity as a project coordinator, mm -hmm. you know, in your formal capacity with the department, or just that you've seen on the with the neighborhood councils that you've helped. What's anything that you've seen as a big success? Yeah, let me let me let me let me answer it this way, but let me let me touch up on one point, right? You mentioned the department's been around for 17 years, mm -hmm. right? Think about it this way. Is there are there really mature 17 year olds? Maybe they no, are. That's a good good question. <laughs> right? We'll we're, try we're, to find one and bring them on as a guest and we'll let the people decide. So <laughs> this is a plug for civic youth. Okay? That's right. Civic youth coming up. That's Tom, right. do you have the dates for that? Because no. I don't have it. We'll put it in the show notes. That's what we say. That's gonna be our catch all for anything that's where right. we don't always, know anything. Always trying to publicize. It's yes. in the show notes. There you go. <laughs> Something memorable, though, you mentioned that. I, 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 I'm explaining to you the phases of, you know, the beginning stages. Right. The, the, let me answer it this way. We've gone from what's called the grassroots, and, and this, this is why I feel is a, is a great success, is that we've gone from what's called like a grassroots um, experiment, or something that may not last, to a worldwide, and I dare say this, right, a worldwide phenomenon. Hmm. Let me explain by that, is that, if you come to our department, 20th floor, okay, and you go to our conference room, we have a big map. And on that map, you're going to see little names and you can see little little, little points and dots mm -hmm. you know, of people from uh, – it's a worldwide map. Right, global. Right? Global map. And you're going to see little dots of all these locations, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Mongolia, um, South America, mm -hmm. Africa. You're going to see all these dots there. Why? Because a lot of worldwide now, people have are, are getting to know that, oh my gosh, with, because of the Department of Neighbor Empowerment, that there are we are actually, you know, this is the biggest, probably the largest civic engagement, you know, advisory, you know, yeah, model operation, operation yeah, in the anywhere. world. So where people so folks are coming here to say to to look at what do you guys what what do you do? What are you doing? What, what are you guys doing with what this are you guys crazy doing, experiment? Right? Right? And yeah. these are so so to me, I think that's a great on a on a macro, I think that's a great success. Absolutely. You know, yeah. to on a local level, to me it's still the same, Brett. It's been seventeen years I I've, I've been there, probably fifteen years with working with certified neighborhood councils. Mm -hmm. The the bill the, the fact that these Working with these community groups, these neighborhood councils who represent community groups, that every month we know that at least, well, they post on time, that they, they, there's, nine, there's at least 90 plus meetings throughout the city of Los Angeles every month, mm -hmm. not counting committee meetings, Brett. Right. You know, that's out there. They are really trying to do some good things for the community. 
And the success of it is that I get to be a part of that. Right. And, you know, that old saying, people say democracy is really like a series of meetings. That's what that's what creates the, the democracy, a vibrant space that we have. And the way I view it is this is the most inclusive form of democracy in the world, meaning right. the, the barriers to participation are so low the the variety of people that you get is so high. Yeah. So in those 90 plus meetings every month and all the committee meetings, you, you have so many opportunities to, yeah. to engage. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. That is an incredible situation. Yeah. Success. All right, Tom, I don't want to be a downer because I know we just talked about successes, okay. but we got to be real with people. Right. So in your tenure here, Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, a.k.a. Empower LA, mm -hmm. um, what has been one of your biggest setbacks, again, with the, either within the context of department work or with you know, a particular neighborhood council or something regional? What, what's been a big setback that you've identified? I'll give you a macro and a personal one, too. Okay. okay? The big one, I think, is that back in 2008, you know, if you remember, it, it was a time of a recession. Sure. And then we went from, gosh, I think at that time, like 25 plus project coordinators down to like six or seven, Jeez. and then so that I call that a setback because my my ratio became from one of me to like twenty plus neighborhood councils, right? And how do you really serve um, the neighborhood councils? You know, with so with, with so many mm -hmm. that's 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 out there. So I call that, you know, fortunately, you know, we're, we're so glad you're here. You know, that we're getting to a point where we're getting getting more 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 help and more staff. But I say back in two thousand eight, there was a little rough time out there you know is, are we even going to survive as a department at right. that time you right. know? so i call that so from a from a from a departmental stand i think that was a that was a very tough time those couple of years just to try to be you know, providing the service there on a personal uh, setback i think is that you know you can't be the challenge is you want to be there for all your neighborhood councils and then sometimes the reality is you you, you can't you know sometimes a lot of this job is very interpersonal driven. Mm -hmm. And then you know, sometimes you, you do one thing, it's construed the other way. You know, a right. lot of times people feel like Dunn is trying to tell us what to do, trying to give us this, right? <laughs> and as if we speak on behalf of the whole department. Yeah. They are endowing in us a lot of power. <laughs> they are, but as, as if we want, if we really have an agenda to have them fail. <laughs> right. You know, so on a personal thing, personal level, I think that uh, sometimes our actions could be misinterpreted. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I definitely understand that perspective. Just as someone who served on a neighborhood council is that, you know, you kind of have to be the intermediary a lot of times yeah. when people's expectations are sky high. And you say, right. you know what, guys, they're not only are they humans, which, you know, gives a lot of room for, you know, imperfection, but also the capacity of a department and any city agency, which is what you speaking to about 2008 i imagine p in people's minds at least it must have been a little bit more pressing and understandable to be like yes we know and they just got cut by 75 percent or yeah. some yeah. huge number like that yeah, oh anyway so thanks for sharing that that's i mean that's i know it's personal sometimes and you're talking about the relationships that you build so yeah. that's, that's really yeah. important so in terms of lessons you know what how, how what would you describe as some important lessons that you've learned from those successes and those setbacks well, on a, on a personal level, I think that the one phrase we, we can learn is that uh, because, like you mentioned, we are kind of the intermediary, mm -hmm. right? That Which means that if you, you can't be an intermediary if there's no factions or sides. Right. And believe right. it or not. Everyone's getting along. Believe, it's... believe it or not, neighborhood councils actually sometimes have people don't like each other. I do. I believe that. You believe that. Okay, yes. good, right? But then, so the, the, I think the one lesson I've learned is that if both groups or the, both factions are upset at you, you're doing your job. <laughs> <laughs> you're, the re you're the referee. You're the referee. <laughs> you're the referee, right? At the end of the day, you know, um, the lesson is don't take it too personally, but be, be passionate about what we're, what we're doing, though. Yeah, I think that's a great lesson. I mean, it, when it comes from a place of passion and compassion, too, meaning for yeah. everyone who's volunteering their time, because yeah. that's what we're ultimately talking about, people yeah. who are giving their time. Yeah. Yes, they are elected officials and appointed officials, but they yeah. are dedicating a lot of time and resources. And I, I, I do hope that, you know, they understand that the other direction, yeah. too. One, so. one more thing on that, Brett, if I can, is that uh, is also... The challenge with the city is that, and the, the, the joke is this, right? Not in the joke, but the, the reality is this, is that when you get a phone call, when I get a phone call, it's not a phone call to say, how are you doing? Right. You're doing a great <laughs> job, right? People, and then click. Then click, it. right. So then the, the, we, we get the phone calls of the folks that are 
disgruntled or upset or upset at us or upset at an issue or at each other. Mm-hmm. And I think the challenge is that we're here to empower everybody. And we, we fo- if we focus so much, and we should, on only those who keep calling or the, the negative the, the the I don't say the negative, but the people who just kind of have these concerns and complaints. Right. I think we could miss out on some of the really good leaders that's out there too. Sure, so, sure. We, so we have to be careful of that. Well, even with regard to when someone is calling from uh, a perspective of they want to accomplish something wholly good, right? They want to yeah. do this great project. Even that, I think people understand that 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 takes a significant amount of resources to convene people to tackle an issue like homelessness at the neighborhood council level. That's not something you just put together overnight. You know, this no. is something that takes months of work. So when we get that call that says, hey, I want to do something about homelessness in my community, that triggers a lot of things that say, okay, well, we're going to have to dedicate some resources and time to this. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- those ca- those calls can be very, uh, th- lots of tugs, lots of tugs and pulls about on resources. And Definitely. Tugs. So, you know, this may be a little redundant, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So, uh, given all that you just said, what's the one thing you most want the neighborhood council community, however you define that, to understand about the work you do, the work we do? We're not trying to decertify them or trying to get. <laughs> upset with them, right? Yeah. So, uh, I think that I think the the one thing that I could, if I could have the neighborhood councils understand, is that we are really trying to we we do want them to survive, yeah, and succeed. We do right? want them to flourish. You know, you've heard of the term exhaustive effort. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it sounds very punitive, right? But the, what's the purpose of exhaustive effort is to make sure we have a functioning board, right? We're not here to serve one person or one faction. We're here to serve the you know the neighborhood councils in the city of Los Angeles. What that what that means is that we're here to serve the board, but also to those people who aren't at the table yet. Right, right. Yeah. The people they represent. Ultimately, we're trying to broaden that perspective, right? right? You know, so Definitely. I think that that means a lot. And one of the last questions I want to ask: um, We are the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Right. What does empowerment mean to you? How do you define empowerment? I define empowerment as I can walk to a meeting and everything's running smoothly and I don't and, and they're running smoothly not because I get up during the meeting and tell them you're doing this wrong you're doing this right but I've already talked to the leadership ahead of time and so they know what to do so what that means is that I believe leadership is not about you doing everything me Tom doing everything on their own for them mm-hmm. my belief is that you're really empowering someone where they could do things on their own Mm -hmm. and that things run smoothly on their own. Because why? Because you've helped educate, you help equip, you help train them to know what the right things to do. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, Any final thoughts about, you know, this, the podcast itself, you know, which is obviously awesome, but uh, you know, the uh, neighborhood council system, your work you do, any final thoughts? You know, I, you know, I I mentioned, um, you know, even though the department, is 17 years old, which is a young, de- which is a young department. It's a child. It's a child, right? Yeah. Th- doesn't mean I'm a child because I've been here for 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> I started this job back in my late 20s and I'm not in my late 20s anymore. You're not? Tom, you look <laughs> very young. See, this is one problem with the podcast. You can't see. Well, we will redirect you again. <laughs> Show notes. You will see. You will see what Tom looks like so you can see our faces. Oh, gosh, but man, he's, a, he's a young looking man. Uh, take my picture off the website. I need a new picture. Deceiving. It's okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Aaron will shoot. A, there you go. Picture. Now, my final thoughts is that, you know, I just, I'm just amazed still. You know, we, you know, but you know, we, we, we hear about a lot of the complaints about the system and everything, but the reality is you know, 17 years still going strong. Mm-hmm. 17 years from from a from a grassroots experiment to a worldwide, you know, phenomenon. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, that's a that's something that I'm really proud of. To, to say that I was uh, to, to be continually a part of that. That's um, that's that's pretty. I'm really blessed to be had that opportunity. Well, that's a great parting thought. Thank you, Tom, for your service, not only to the city and the neighborhood council system, but to this podcast, because that's that's the most important. No, Brett, I'm, I'm here Tom. to serve you. Exactly. Tom yeah. served the us council. in the best capacity possible. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Pleasure Thanks. having you.